and 10, where Jesus said, The thief, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And last Sunday morning, we were basically talking about the thief, our enemy, the devil, the adversary, the liar, the murderer. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. He came, let me say it this way, to scrape the DNA of God out of our hearts to replace it with his DNA. And the DNA of God is revealed to us in the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, and against such there is no law. And he is holy. God is holy. God is a God of faith. And the devil came to scrape out the DNA. And that's why he even told us in the last days, the love of many, the agape of many, shall wax cold because iniquity shall abound. And we see the love of many people are waxing cold because it says love covers a multitude of sin. And when people are walking in love, when they're walking in the character and the nature of Jesus, they will not be able to be offended. They will not get aggravated. They'll not get nasty. They'll not get mean. They'll not get upset. They'll not get bitter. They'll not get resentful. That's not the character of Christ. That's the character of the devil. And the thief came, the devil came, the liar came, the enemy came to scrape out the divine character of God and replace it with himself. And we know there's the works of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5. Adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, self-loving, self-serving, self-pleasing, self-seeking. These are all the works of the flesh. And they that do such things shall not inherit eternal life. So Christ came in order to destroy the works of the devil. That's what he said. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to give us life. And life in abundance or overflowing life. Remember, we know Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of right living, righteousness for his name's sake. Jesus came to undo what the devil had done in our soul. And so in John 10, 10, he says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's why he says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So I've got to learn how to walk by faith. I can't walk by how I feel, how it looks, what it seems. I can't walk by, uh, you know, people's opinions. I can't walk by the secular uh, doctrines of this world. I've got to walk by faith. And faith is built and based on nothing but the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So whatever God says, let God be true and everything else a lie. Everything else a lie. That's how many times God has supernaturally healed us and praise God the my, my publisher called me up this week and our book he's sending it to me now I got to look at the final copy and within two weeks our new book should be out called living in a realm of the miraculous 127 miracles that we've seen God do where he provided protected healed delivered and supernaturally worked on our behalf as a family as a family pastor Mike why do you think God has done so much in your family family and I'll tell you the reason why it's not because we put the word always first but we've had more word than we've had world the more word you have the more Christ will be in your life the more world you have the more the devil will be in your life so you got to be full of the word 
because Christ is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I am going to exalt my Word above my name, and I will bring a move of my Spirit that will be based on my Word and not on even personal experiences. So we are ready. It says there will be a famine in the last days of the word of God. That's why many preachers, when they preach, there's very little scripture coming out of their mouth because there's very little scripture in their heart. Very little scripture in their heart. And yet it's by the word that we overcome for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination, every thought, every high thing exalts itself above the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You understand? I come from a background of being absolutely manic depressant, alcoholic, drug user, Messed up, born with a speech impediment, but when I gave my heart to Christ, the word of God became alive in me. So John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief cometh not. The devil's coming, whether you like it or not. And what is he? He's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, how are you going to overcome the devil? You got to do it by Jesus. There is no other way you can overcome the devil but by Jesus, and He is the Word, and the and the Word is Him. And so Jesus said, I am come. Now, I think that's very significant because not a word that Jesus ever spoke was by mistake or accident. He said, I am. Isn't that amazing? He used the terminology, I am. The very first time that the word I am was used was when the Lord appeared to Abraham in a dream in Genesis chapter 15. And from then on, he began to talk about the I am that I am, or the all-sufficient one, the self-existent one, he who needs no one and nothing. See, God is the great I am. <laughs> I am that I am. One day, see, Moses knew that he was called to bring Israel out of captivity from the hand of Pharaoh, who they were slaves to. 430 years in the land of Egypt, and Moses, as a young man, thought he was going to do it in the natural. And he killed an Egyptian soldier. And the Israelites turned on him, and he ran out into the wilderness for 40 years. He's out there for 40 years, wandering around in the wilderness. And one day, he saw a fire burning up on the side of a mountain in a bush. And his curiosity rose up inside of him, and he went up to see what it was. And there was a bush on fire, but it was not devoured. And a voice came out of the bush... And he said, you are standing on holy ground. God began to speak to him out of a burning bush. And that burning bush was nothing special. Actually, I believe it was a bush called hyssum, which is the same bush that was used to apply the blood of the Passover lamb to the doorpost and the lintel. And the bush was on fire, but it was not burning. And he said to Moses, he said, I've appeared unto you for this purpose, like he did to Saul of Tarsus when he turned him into a Paul. He said, I've appeared unto you for this purpose. He said, I want you to go back to Egypt. He said, I want you to tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. He says, I'm going to cause them to be delivered by a mighty right arm of my power, and you're going to do signs and wonders with the rod that is in your hand. And he says, but Lord, who am I to tell him that's sending me? He says, tell him that I am that I am is sending you. I am that I am? Yes, I am that I am. You know, if you look up the word I am pertaining to God, it almost appears close to from, be, from Genesis to Revelation almost 700 times, the I am that I am. Matter of fact, Jesus kept on saying, I am, I am, I am. Matter of fact, when they came to arrest Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he had been in prayer, and they, he said, whom do you look for? And he said, they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he simply said this, he said, I am. And when he said, I am, the power of God hit them all like a bowling ball hitting pins. And he, he had a 100% strike. They all went flying down. The soldiers and the Pharisees and all those who came. He said, I am. I am. And once again, they asked him, and he said, I am. He is the great I am. Matter of fact, when he stood before the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees, they said, who do you say that you are? Are you the son of God? And he said, I 
am. And that's when the high priest tore his garment. You know why? Because he used the Hebrew word for the great I am. I am. So Jesus said, I am. I am what? I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, and the light. He said, I am come that you might have life. I am the great I am. I am the bread of heaven. I am the answer. I am your healer. I am your sacrificial lamb. I am the... Matter of fact, in Isaiah chapter... If you looked in Isaiah chapter 40 to verse 60, 35 times he says, I am, I am, I am, I am. In Genesis, he says, I am, I am. Throughout the whole in the New Testament, he says, I am, I am. Matter of fact, in the book of Revelation, he says it seven times. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who was, who is, and is coming again. I am, I am. I am the vine. I am the way. Matter of fact, in John chapter 10, he uses the word I am six times in John chapter 10. I am, I am, I am. What is he trying to get us to see, Pastor Mike? He's trying to get us to see that he is the answer. He is our life. In him we live and move and have our being. He's all that we ever wanted, all that we ever dreamed for, all that we ever asked for. We were made for him. He was not made for us. We are complete in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. See, the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is Jesus Christ. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Am. <laughs> he is the great I am. I said he is the great I am. He's not a sham like the Wizard of Oz. Hello. <laughs> He's not a fake. He's not an imitation. He's, he, he's, not, he, he's not synthetic. He is the real thing. He is the answer. He is the healer. He is the deliverer. He is the provider. He is the lover of your soul. He is the Passover lamb. He is the man of He is the rock we build our life upon. He's our consistent thought. He's all of our hopes, all of our dreams, all of our desires. He's our everything. See, you understand. You know what Jesus one day said to his disciples? Who, who do men say that I am? And they say, well, some say you're Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're some other prophet. And he said this. He says, well, whom do you say that I am? In the question was the answer. <laughs> Hello? He was giving us a clue. He said, whom do you say? I am. <laughs> he said, I am. And Peter spoke up and he said, you are. <laughs> he said, who am I, guys? I am. He said, Peter said, you are. You are the Christ, the Son of God of the living God. And he said this, Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. He said, And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. He said, And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The gates of hell will not prevail against what? The great I am. See, well, he's, why, how come was Peter was blessed? Because Peter had a revelation of who Christ was. He didn't have a revelation of Peter. He had a revelation of Jesus. I don't need a revelation of Mike Yeager. I need a revelation of Jesus because when I see him, I will be like him. That's what David said. David said, he said, I have great hope because he said, I will appear and I will be like you. I am. And when I get a revelation of who Jesus is, I will be just like him. See, he said, I am holy. He said, I am holy. And the, the last time he used the word I am in, in the Old Covenant was in Malachi chapter 3. I think it is in verse 6. He said, I am the Lord. And I change not. 
I mean, the same, listen, he's, it's not a different God from the book of Genesis all the way up to the book of Malachi and Micah and to the beginning of Matthew to Revelation. It's the same I am. He's the same God. He said, I am the Lord and I change not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And one day I had a revelation as I was committing suicide that I was going to hell and I fell to my knees and I had a revelation that Jesus was my only salvation. And I cried out to Jesus in 1975, February the 18th, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I cried out to Jesus. And the great I am came rushing the lover of my soul, my redeemer, my deliverer. And he became my friend. He became my hero. He became my all in all. Even as just a, a spanking brand new baby little Christian, he became my everything. And I began to look into him because Paul said that I might know him, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of the suffering. How do I come to know God? I come to know him by his word. I believe this is the divine revelation of the heavenly father that must be quickened by the Holy Ghost. And as I began to just devour the word because the Bible says the desire, the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. You know, a natural physical baby, if you do not give that baby the mother's milk or you do not feed that baby, that baby will die. He will swivel up, she will swivel up and die. That child has got to have food. That, 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 that baby has got to have the proper diet. It must be fed or it will die. Well, spiritually speaking, people get born again. They give their hearts to Christ because they have a revelation that Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Christ. He is the only way to the Heavenly Father. But they don't have a revelation that man does not live by bread alone, but by Every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And because they don't have a revelation, that their level of revelation, their level of revelation, their level of victory, their level of success is in direct proportion to the amount of the word of God that they hide in their heart. And so people say, I don't understand. It's like a person, have you ever, you know, there's, this has actually happened to me. There's a couple of times when I, man, I was really sick. I mean, my stomach was so upset. Man, and all day long I'm going, what is wrong? My stomach is so upset. I just don't understand. I feel so sick. I'm claiming the word. I'm speaking the word. But my stomach is so sick. I'm so sick I don't even feel like eating. And so I would sit, I'm, I, and this has happened to me. I, I know it's hard to believe it could be this stupid. But I sat down and I made myself eat and to my shock and amazement, the pain went away because I discovered my problem was is that I was hungry. How many can say that? Has anybody else like that? Has, has anybody? Well, look, I got some people like me. I mean, I was sick and I was so sick I didn't feel like eating, but my problem was is that I was hungry. This morning I was walking around and I was saying, I wonder what my glasses are, I wonder what my glasses are, and I touched my face and they were on my face. Huh? Has that ever happened to you? And hear people say, oh, I just don't understand. I love God. I want God. I want to serve God. I want to follow God. But it just, Pastor, I can't overcome sin. I can't overcome thoughts. I can't overcome feelings. I can't overcome wrong ideals. I just don't know what's wrong. I tell you what's wrong. You're not putting the word of God in your heart. I'm not just talking about memorizing scriptures. I, I don't know if you know this, but your, your, your brain is a meat grinder. It grinds your head. Your brain was made to grind thoughts. Thoughts get into your head. Ideals get into your head. Philosophies get into your head. And your head, all of us do the same thing. It just grinds it away, grinds it away, grinds it away, grinds it away. But the problem is, is your, ma your head was made to never shut up. Did you know that? Your brain was n made never to be quiet, but you're feeding it the wrong food. Somebody said to me, Pastor Mike, do you ever have a problem when you pray about your mind being here and your mind being there? I said, no. I don't have a problem with my mind just floating all over the place. You know why? Because I put so much of the word of God into my head to where when I'm walking the floor, that's all I'm thinking. 
People say, I don't understand how you think, Pastor Mike. That's because you don't have the mind of Christ. When you get the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ will take you into a realm where all things are possible. Like the time I broke my foot and the fifth time I slammed it down, it was instantly healed. Or the time I broke my back when I was carrying sacks of grain and I fell like a crippled man. But the word came up and said, no, by his stripes I was. If I was, I am. And if I am, I is. I'm him is healed. And the word of God overrode the pain in my back. And no matter what my symptoms said, and I rose up and I fell and I rose up and I fell and I dragged the bags into the farmer's barn and I rose up in the next morning I rolled out of bed could hardly walk but the word of God was more real to me than the symptoms in my back and as I went to work never told my boss I got hurt wasn't thinking about getting disability or be getting a check for the rest of my life. I said, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And as I was feeding, I was filling the third, third feed bag for a pig run. I had to make take pig food to a farmer. The power of God hit my back, and I was instantly healed, and I've been healed ever since. Like the time I ripped my kneecap off of my leg, driving a snowmobile down the main highway in the middle of a storm, trying to help the police department, the fire department, went spinning, slammed my knee into the asphalt, ripped my kneecap off, still completed the journey I had just begun, and in two weeks, one morning I got up, I could take my kneecap and I could move it around. One morning I got up and my kneecap was completely healed and has been healed ever since. How can this be, Pastor Mike? The Word, the Word hit in my heart. The Word dominating my thoughts. The Word rising up. Pastor Mike, do you ever get to the place where that doesn't happen? Yeah, when I'm not meditating on the Word. I can take a problem. The Bible says take no thought. Take no thought of what you will eat, what you will wear, what you drink. But a lot of people, all they think about is, what are we going to eat? What am I going to wear today? Where am I going to live? But the Bible says take no thought. But they take it. People take offense. Don't take offense. I will not take offense. I'm like a Teflon pan. Bless God. It just rolls off my back. Says in them, my wife always loved to quote that scripture to me. And I don't know why I didn't want to memorize it. Because it says, and it says great, great peace have them that love thy law. And nothing shall offend them. So when I get offended, it simply means I don't love the word. See, but be ye transformed. And what did Paul say? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye. Tell your neighbor, be ye. That means you. <laughs> be ye transformed. What are we supposed to be transformed in? To the sons of God. For as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even as many that believe on this name. I want to be transformed. I want to be like Jesus. I want to talk like Jesus. I want to think like Jesus. I want to act like Jesus. I want to do the works of Jesus. When I tell a blind man's eyes to open up, I want him to open up. When I say to a crippled man, rise up, he'll be raised up. When I grab a person who's in a tomb or in a, in, in a, in a casket and pull him out and slam him against the wall, I want I'm to live I've had some of it happen but I know it's available because Jesus said the works that I do shall you do also but greater works than these so you do but pastor Mike I don't have the capacity to meditate upon the word and to think and to ponder on the truth. Oh, that's a lie from the pit of hell because your brain never shuts up it's just what you put in it this week as I was praying, I had a miniature vision. I have lots of visions and dreams and experiences. I don't talk about most of them because I want to exalt the word of God. But you know what activates the supernatural? It's the word of God. For God confirms his word with signs following. It will change you. It will transform you. It will make you into a different person. If you knew the Mike Yeager back when I, before I got born again, and you do the, knew the Mike Yeager of today, I was no, nobody in my family lineage was a minister or a preacher or a pastor. None of us. Us. I didn't know any godly people in my family. None of us. We were all drinkers and smokers when we sat around our kitchen table. My mom, my dad, my sister Debbie, my brother Dennis, Danny wasn't born yet. We all sat around and we all smoked and it looked like the Shekinah glory. 
around our dinner table. I mean, man, just smoke everywhere. And I got my family mad at me because we were Winston people, and I changed to Raleigh. What are you smoking Raleigh for? I mean, that's the way we were. First time I got drunk, I was at a Catholic wedding. One of my cousins got married. Uh, one of my cousins by the name of Hooper. And I got drunk, sneaking everybody's beer. Had a hangover this next morning, puked my guts out. And from then on, until I got gloriously born again, I drank. I'd come home from school. I'd open up the refrigerator. I'd pull out a Paps Blue Ribbon because that's what we drank. We drank. We dare not drink Miller. <laughs> my dad said Miller was for the wimps. <laughs> So we drank past blue ribbon beer. I'd take out a past blue ribbon beer. I'd sit down and watch Gilligan Island drinking a beer. My dad didn't mind if I drank beer as long as I didn't smoke dope. So I never told him when I smoked the dope and popped the pills. But when I got born again, when I had a revelation, and when I gave my heart to Jesus, I immediately began to go to the Bible, and I began to look and study the life of Jesus, and through the life of Jesus, I saw by his stripes ye were healed. Jesus said, I am come, that you might have life, that I am come, I am come, I am come, I am come, I am come. He's coming, and he has come, but the problem is we're not receiving what he has to give. It's like them when the milkman comes to your door. At least they used to when I was a kid knocking the door. Well, Mrs. Yeager, we got milk for you. Not today, thank you. The Holy Ghost comes to you all the time and says, you need to pray. You need to read your Bible. You need to forgive. Listen, I guarantee there's not one truly saved person this morning, born-again person, that the Holy Ghost did not speak to them. You need to get up and get into the house of God. Why didn't they come? Because they didn't listen. Because they don't understand. Jesus wants to lead you into life. The devil wants to take you into death. That's why don't accept the thoughts of the devil. The minute, you know, the, the Bible says, listen, in James it says, Speak not evil one of another, brethren. For he that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. Who art thou that judges another? From which the word of God forbids you. Can I say this, brother? The word of God forbids you to say one negative word about your wife. He forbids you. And sister, the word of God forbids you to say one negative word about your husband. What? One negative word. Who is it that inspires me to tell everybody what my husband's done and where he's been or what my wife has done, where she's been? It's not the Holy Ghost. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where there is envy and strife, there is every evil work. Every evil work. People walking around saying they're full of God when they're full of the devil. Speaking evil about one another. Speaking ungodly stuff. Judging each other's hearts. See, I don't judge nobody's heart. The Bible says there's only one that can judge you said, yeah, but by their fruits you'll know them. That's right, by their fruits you'll know them. You'll discover where they're at and how you need to help them. I never, by the grace of God, want to look at people in a negative image. See, that's what the Pharisees did. The woman who, who had been caught in adultery, they wanted to kill her. Jesus wanted to rescue her. Mary Magdalene, who Jesus cast seven devils out of when she was pouring the uh, break open the uh, alabaster box and poured it over Jesus. And the Pharisees were sitting there and they're saying, they just don't know what kind of woman that is. That ain't, he says, you don't know what spirit you're of. I tell you, the Holy Ghost has really been speaking. He said, son, don't grieve. Don't grieve me. Don't grieve me. You're sealed by the Holy Spirit under to the day of redemption. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Let all, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. No wonder the devil's having a heyday. 
Well, how come there's so much garbage and filth in people's hearts, Pastor Mike? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. See, here's the problem we have in church anity. We're trying to teach people how to witness. We're trying to teach people how to love people. We're trying to teach people how to do the will of God. Come, let me tell you something. That stuff is not taught. That stuff is caught. That has got to be real in your heart, man. You know what? When you, when you really get the word of God, see, it's the word of God that transforms you. It's the word of God that changes you. It's what you meditate on. It's what you are, what you are meditating on. That's why Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life. How did he come to give us life? By the words he spoke. He said, Father, with your word, I have given them your word, and they're washed with your word, and they're sanctified by your word. They're purged by your word. He said, Father, I've given thy word, and thy word is in them, and now the word will change them. The word, see, I just discover something. The word of God, you need to wrap it around yourself like a caterpillar spins a cocoon. You get inside of that cocoon where nothing of outside influence can enter in. You're in that cocoon of the word, of the word, the word, the word. You're meditating on what Jesus said, what the apostles said, what the prophets of old said. You're on the word, the word, and nothing else. You can't see what's going on on the outside of you. You don't know what's going on politically. You don't know what's going on in other, any kind of environment. Now you say, Pastor Mike, you think we can wrap ourselves in a cocoon and get in a cave and hide? Well, first of all, I will say this, almost all of the famous prophets of God were men who were not involved in the affairs of this life because no man that warreth entangled himself in the affairs of this life that he may please him who's called him to be a soldier. I don't know if you see this, but I'm giving you the word, the word, the word, the word because my opinion will not change you, but it's the word of God that will transform you. So I'm going to give you the word because it's the word that will be used by the Holy Spirit. It's not philosophy. It's not psychology. It's not psychoanalysts. It's not the philosophies of this world that the Holy Ghost uses. It's not people's opinions. You know what the devil uses? He uses the doctrines and the philosophies and the ideals and the educational system of this world to mess up the heads of our children. God uses his word. Do you know we had the word of God in the public school until the early 1950s? And you know the, the worst thing that happened in most public schools was they were running in the hallway, they were chewing gum, and they were throwing paper wads at one another. And now what are they doing? They're raping, murdering, killing, stabbing, shooting, writing filthy garbage over the walls. You know why? They took the word of God out of of the school system. You know why we've got Christian homes where the devil himself dwells? It's because they have no word of God and they let the devil come in. And they sit their kids in front of that TV and the kids watching, murdering, raping, killing, lying, cussing, swearing, and then the kid grows up to be exactly what he's been watching and we blame the kid when it's mom and dad's fault. But we don't want to tell the truth because the truth hurts. You know what the truth ought to do? It ought to make you repent. Father, forgive me for letting anything in front of my, my, my children's eyes that were so contrary to the will and the nature of God. Every good gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights in whom there's no variable is not a shadow of turning. Of his own will he begat us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. It's by the word of God I overcome. It's by the word of God I'm transformed. Jesus is the word. And when he becomes alive in me, is Christ in me the hope of glory. <laughs> the word, the word, Christ in you, quickened by the spirit. He'll change you and you'll begin to live and walk and talk and move in a realm where the natural flesh cannot go to. Most believers are like eagles or chickens that have their pin feathers clipped. You know, that's what they do with chickens. Chickens are supposed to be able to fly, but they clip their, and even, you know, even, even other animals, you know, they, farmers a lot of times will clip the feathers to where they can flap them all they want and they can't fly. A lot of Christians are like that. They don't understand their feathers are being clipped by what they're watching. 
by what they're thinking on, by what they're saying, and by what they're doing. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man who beholdeth his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he be not forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Who's blessed? Those. What is tell, tell Psalms chapter 1? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, the fault finders, the nitpickers, the backstabbers. Blessed is the man who doesn't do that, but his delight, his delight, his joy is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth his fruit in due season, and his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. It's amazing. We've got the answer. We've got the solution right in front of our faces. God has privileged us to have his word that will never pass away. And yet, it collects dust. Pastor Mike, I just, I don't know what's wrong. I just, I'm tormented day and night. Let me tell you something. A tormented mind is a mind with none of the word of God in it. When the word of God takes control of your mind, it'll stop flipping out, it'll stop worrying, it'll stop getting bitter, it'll stop getting upset, it'll stop wanting the things of this world. The more of the word of God you hide in your heart, the less of the world you'll want. The more of the world you put in your heart, the less of the word you'll want. Light and darkness does not mix. Double-minded. The church is double-minded. But I have great joy because it was prophesied that at the very end, the church will wake up again, because remember, before the king comes, the trumpet will sound, there'll be, ten, five, there'll be ten virgins, five foolish and five wise. That means people who really are born again, and five of them will wake up and say, I need the word of God, I need the word of God, give me the word of God. And they'll begin to devour the truth. And the truth is, Pastor Mike, it's so hard to get the word inside of me. I know because you're so used to cotton candy. You're so used to hot dogs. You're so used to junk food. You know, people who are addicted to junk food and sweets, it's hard to break that pattern, to eat healthy. You know, in the natural, my, my, my mom and dad, they didn't let junk food in our house. And I let very little bit into my house, by the way. And, and uh, uh, so I was raised with meat and potatoes, carrots, Corn, asparagus. I was. I wish I would have been raised with spinach, mm. but we didn't have spinach. Turnips. I mean, we were raised. We were a vegetable family, and we had some meat, not a lot of meat. You understand what I'm saying? I tell you what. Through the years, we had many of the parishioners' children come to our house, and every 99% of them turned their nose up at the food we were eating. Now, my children, in the natural, it's not just because we know how to believe God, but they've been very, very, matter of fact, some of my children have never even really been to see a doctor, except when they had to get an expert, they had to for their driver's license or something. I went to see the doctor here because I went to get my CDL to drive a bus, that big coach bus out there, and so I had to have a physical examination, and, and the doctor said to me, he's a new doctor, I used to have old Dr. Hammett, and he said to me, he said, when's the last time you've been to a doctor? I said, well, I... Uh, I haven't been since, you know, probably 1975. He said, what? He said, you haven't been to the doctor. I said, no. He, he, he said, well, what's wrong with you physically? I said, well, nothing wrong with me. He said, what? He's an officer. I'm, I'm doing good. Check my blood pressure. Check this. Did some other embarrassing things. He said, and he was dictating. He said, abnormally healthy. I thought, abnormally healthy. Abnormally healthy? Why? Because I discovered the great physician. His name is Jesus. Well, what happened, Pastor Mike? My wisdom be teeth began to come in. See, people are real quick to get... I'm, my mom and dad had my tonsils cut out. I wish to God they wouldn't. Now they're finding out that you need your tonsil. You know what? Did you know that? 
And thank God none of my children have their tonsil cut out. Well, what would you do when you got a flame, Pastor Mike? I put my hand on their throat and commanded the swelling to go in the name of Jesus. But if you don't submit to authority, how can you exercise authority? I'll tell you right now, can I tell you something? Just let's be honest with this. Listen, the Bible says, children, obey your parents and the Lord that you might live long on the earth. We don't tell the kids the repercussions. When, when children do not obey their parents, it opens the door for the devil to take them out. And wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. So wives, you're supposed to submit. And husbands, you're supposed to love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So we're supposed to be doers of the word, but most people will justify, I can't submit to him. Listen, this, I know this is bizarre, but I've had men and women, you know what, when you're not in the spirit, you're in trouble. So I've said, yeah, this is hard to believe. This is, I, you know, I basically stopped counseling now. I don't want to hear this stuff no more. It is so off the wall. I, I've sat down with men and wives. And the wife would say, my husband has been faithful to me. And he would say, yeah, but she cut me off 15 years ago. What? Yeah, she won't have sex with me no more. Well, he ain't faithful to me. I said, well, let's kind of add this up here. You ain't giving him no loving. And he's in the flesh and he's out to get some loving. Because he's not in the spirit. Because if he's in the spirit, he, he, it wouldn't move him. He'd go to God and say, oh, God, help me, help me, God. I'm not going to lose my mind. God, help me. Thank you, Jesus. You're my source. And she's not in the spirit because she cut him off. So you got two accidents going somewhere to happen. People wonder why their lives are. You know why people's lives are messed up? Because they're not. Well, I thought Jesus came to give me life, Pastor Mike, and give me to me. But yeah, here, this, you know how you get life? He said, I am the shepherd. Follow me. He said, follow me now, guys. Walk how I walk. Okay, you walk, talk the way I talk. Live the way I live. Think the way I think. You know what he said at 12 years old? I must be about my father's business. You know what? It's, it's hard to find people like that. But I believe the Holy Ghost is about to raise them up. No, it's all about money. It's all about stuff. It's all about what I can get. It's all about me. It's all, no, it's all about Jesus. I am so excited. I am because I know this is a work of the Holy Ghost. I know Mike Yeager can't change you, can't transform you. I'm not the potter. Yes, you're the clay, but I'm not the potter. But Jesus is the potter, and he'll mold the clay. But the clay has got to be softened. And how does that happen? By the reign of the Spirit. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. I am come. I am come that you might, that you might. He didn't say you would. He said, I am come that you might have life. That's life as God has it. God never has a bad hair day. You know what? God's really not even really worried what people think about him. God is self, he is the great I am, he's self-sufficient. It says if some do not believe in God, God cannot deny himself. Well, Pastor Mike, don't you believe, don't you everybody believe that we came from monkey which climbed out of the slime pool of some pit in a swamp? You might have, but I didn't. My relatives didn't come from monkeys and apes and gorillas. Some people look like they came from that realm. But I ain't from there. I was made in the likeness and the image of God. He has a plan and a purpose and a mission for my life. I'm not an accident. Well, what if you were born out of wedlock? God knew you were going to be born before you were ever conceived, and he still has a plan for you because what the devil meant for evil, God can turn it to good. See, I'll tell you what, I serve an awesome God. I got to thinking about this. You know, I said, God, please forgive me because I don't, I really want to see you. Listen. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, does he do it by the works of law, by the hearing of faith? It's all by faith. So 
Every aspect of Christianity has got to be apprehended by faith. Grace is apprehended by faith. Forgiveness is apprehended by faith. Mercy is apprehended by faith. It's by faith. See, the reason why people aren't hiding the word of God in their heart because they don't have enough faith. Faith will say, God's word is my answer. I'm going to the word of God. Pastor Mike, would you go to a doctor to get his opinion? No, I don't need his opinion. I'm just telling you where I'm at spiritually. I'm not pride. See, what, Pastor Mike, what if you got cancer? I already had three times. I already had all the full-blown symptoms of cancer in my body. I had the full-blown symptoms of colon cancer. It took me three months, and one day it disappeared, never came. I came back. I had the full-blown symptoms of prostate cancer. It disappeared, never came back. And one morning I got up with lumps in my, in my body, like little tumors all over my belly. And it took three days before they all disappeared and I was healed. Well, listen, he'll be your healer. I'm not criticizing. I don't tell people to walk there. I know why they can't walk there. Because they're not hiding the word in their heart. You know, can I give you some strong scriptures? Cursed is the man who trusts in the arm of the flesh. And that's why we're so cursed. We have more people dying today from cancer than we ever had dying from cancer in the past. Why? Because we're trusting men. Now, throwing away your medicine don't heal you. Not going to a doctor don't heal you. You know what will heal you? When you get a revelation that he is your healer. When it moves from here down to here and it becomes alive in you. Now, you all know what I'm talking about. We're getting ready to close here. But you all, when the word of God becomes alive in you, you will automatically do the word. So there's times in my life, there was a time in my life, I was really struggling with healing. I got sick. I, I couldn't get healed. God, what's wrong? I can't get healed. I can't get healed. He said, well, he said, uh, how are you going to get back to that place to where when you speak, it's done? Oh, no, Lord. He said, where'd you get it from? Well, I got it from a revelation of you. Where'd you get that revelation? Well, I, I, I was memorizing a word and meditating, talking and thinking about it. And he said, that's right, go back to it. So I did. I went back to the word. And I began to take scriptures on healing, Isaiah 53, you know, 1 Peter 2, 24, many of them, Matthew, you know. And I began to think on it. Think on it, think on it, think, speak it, speak it, speak it. To, we're going to, tonight, I'll tell you what we'll do tonight. We'll do tonight. I'll just do the book of James tonight by memory from beginning to end. And I, this time I ain't going to be teaching in between it, but what I'll do is I'm going to take you through the process of how to meditate. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice, James, a servant of God. Notice he establishes his attitude at the beginning of the epistle. James, a slave of God. James, a servant of God. So I go, Mike, you're a servant of God. Mike, you're a servant of God. You're a ser you are not created to tell God what to do. You are created to do what God tells you to do. Hello, Mike, a servant of God. And the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Greetings, my Brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy. Most people don't count it joy. Oh, no, what am I going to do? Oh, everything's falling apart. See, you're not walking by faith. The early church, when they got beat up, whipped up, thrown into prison, they rejoiced. Now we moan and gripe and complain. You see how far we've fallen from the truth? I'm talking about the real church. The real church. But God is going to do it by the Holy Ghost. God is going to do it. See, I have great confidence that God is about to open the eyes of his people. They're going to open their ears. My sheep hear my voice. And another they will not follow. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Tell somebody, God wants you to have life and have it in abundance. Life, joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. 
Sister Nancy, when you came here and you really went after God, before you came here, how much joy did you have? Did you, did you have very much joy? But it sure seems like you, since you've been coming here, you have lots of joy. Matter of fact, the joy sometimes seems to overflow. It looks like it almost bubbles up out of you. And when it begins to bubble out of you, you seem to be able to splash it around on everybody else. Joy. <laughs> I just experienced it. <laughs> Go ahead, splash somebody, splash Sister Mary with joy. Joy, you may think, is not real. It is a tangible spiritual power. I'll give you an example. Depression is a demonic spirit. People with depression, if you're not walking by faith, they'll get around you and pull you right down into their cesspool of depression. I am so sad. Your face looks it, your body talks it, your attitude reveals it, and you walk around. I don't even want to imitate it. I don't want to imitate it because I used to live there. But joy is a tangible power. And he said, I am come that you, Carol, might have joy and have it more abundantly. You know what? It says when Christ, it says that joy unspeakable and full of glory because it says that we believe in Christ. Christ produces joy. Pastor Mike, do you have a lot of joy because you have a lot of money? <laughs> I've got a mountain of opportunities laying on my desk, and I'm believing they're all paid for, but the bill collectors don't know they're paid for yet. But I have joy unspeakable and full of glory. You know where it comes from? It comes from Jesus. See, he says, I am come. So people who begin to walk in that joy, guess what they're doing? They're receiving the life that Christ came to give them. Christ came to give you the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know why people can't come to church? I just, didn't, I just didn't have strength to get out of bed, Pastor Mike. Yeah, I know, because you're not receiving the life that Christ came to give you. Listen. It's what you are putting into your oven. Your head is an oven. See, my, your head is an incubator. Did you know that you're hatching things in your head? There's eggs, your head, your hair, look at the hair on your head, it looks like a nest, doesn't it? Don't look around. Your hair looks like a nest. You got eggs. Somebody has laid eggs in your head. Isn't it amazing the Holy Ghost is, is revealed as the dove? How many know that doves sit on eggs and they hatch eggs? So you got eggs in your head. You better hope some of them eggs don't hatch. Well, listen, everybody who's ever raped, murdered, molested, killed anybody is because that egg was in their head and it was in there and it sat in their brain and kept cooking and cooking until that little devil hatched. And then all of a sudden, they became a murderer. They became a rapist. They became a child molester. Why? The egg was there. And what's in my nest, Pastor Mike? Out of your mouth. We'll see what eggs are in your head by what you say. Whatever eggs are hatching in your head, whether they be vipers or doves, whether they be little sheep, of course, you say sheep don't hatch from an egg. Well, we all began as eggs. Either you're a good egg or you're a bad egg. <laughs> or a rotten egg. <laughs> How many know rotten eggs... Rotten, rotten eggs stink. When your attitude stinks, it reveals there's wrong eggs in your head. Pastor Mike, what am I going to do? My head is full of bad eggs. I was going to say stand on your head, but that won't do it. Take the wrong eggs out and put the right eggs in. What? The Word of God. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. We are, we are headed into revival. 
Let me say one thing about revival. I've studied it. I'm not just talking about in the days of the Azusa revival or the Welsh revival or the George Whitford revival or the Finney revival. Here's the amazing thing. Most revivals did not come by bunches of people praying and gathering. It usually came by one or two or three people that took the word of God seriously and who said this, I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way. Uh, my, my mind, my heart, my life, my words, my thoughts, my desires, my emotions, my attitudes, every part of my being belongs to Jesus Christ. I belong to you, Lord. I'm your body. I'm your temple. Now do with me what you want. And then God steps in. And when God steps in, the devil's got to get out. Let me tell you what the Holy Spirit does. Just keep coming no matter how strong the teaching gets. Because one day suddenly the Holy Ghost is going to show up. And a lot of those problems in your life, a lot of that goofiness, a lot of that wickedness, a lot of that immorality, a lot of that perversion, a lot of that wrong thinking, the Holy Ghost will come and he will, in a matter of moments, literally strip it and burn it right out of you. Instantly. That's what happened to me. That's what, you say, that wasn't first, Pastor Mike. Well, I can't take you to a place where I've not been. I'm telling you, I was an utter mess. But within five minutes, I was the most sanest, godliest, holiest person you probably would have ever met in less than five minutes. The Holy Ghost did it. The Holy Ghost did it. The Holy Ghost is going to do this. You ain't going to say, oh, that preaching from Pastor Mike changed me. No, it's the Holy Ghost that did it. I'm just a vessel. That's all I am. I just opened my mouth, and he'll fill it. Father, I thank you that you've already begun a good work in us. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church throughout all ages world without end amen so I did I did need to share that little vision with you and then I'm here to pray with you he said pastor Mike why should I have you pray for me I don't know there's something about the hands the Bible began to quicken me everybody that Jesus laid hands on was healed that's what it says there's something about the hands the hands they're symbolic of the power and the might of God. There's ten fingers, symbolic of the Ten Commandments. There's, uh, there's, 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 there's uh, over 30 moving joints in my, in my hands. And, and that was the year that Christ was called into the ministry. There's so many amazing things about the hand. Every finger has its own little imprint. It's totally different. And, and the palms of your hands, there is, and I'm not talking about palm readers. There's something about the palm of your hand. There's something about the hand. And when we lay hands on people, and Paul said, stir up the gift that is within you with the laying out of my hands so when I lay my hands the spirit of God the spirit of God is released through the hands it says lay hands in the sick and they shall recover I know this sounds strange but I've laid my hands on people who were depressed and I released the virtue of Christ and the next minute they're depressed and they want to die and the next minute they got so much joy they can't even stand up I've laid my hands on people that were covered in poison and when I turned my back and I turned back around the poison was all gone I mean, laid my hands. One time I touched a man's hand who had, he, he had a bad case of cataracts. And when I touched his hand, his, the cataracts melted off of his eyeballs. He told me that. I know Brother Ron, you had some kind of eye infliction, did you not? And he was up in the, and we were always discussing back and forth the things, you know, and we didn't always see eye to eye. And Ron wasn't coming back to the, coming to the church at this time. He was running a room from me up on the hill, and I went up there one day, and he said to me, he said, Pastor Mike, he said, I've got some kind of eye disease. I can't remember what the name of it was. He said, I got some kind of eye disease. And I said, let me put my thumbs in your eyes. And I put my thumb in his eyes, and I cursed it, and I commanded to go. And he came back about a week, two weeks later. He was down at our thrift store hugging our people when did you go down there hugging people I told I was told you're in the, and he said it's gone it's gone now, of course probably the devil has come since then and said oh you never had it see that's how the devil works there's something about the hand so I'm gonna lay hands I'm gonna lay hands on some of you this morning 
You're going through a hard time. You're going through struggles. You're going through problems. You've got physical discipline. Pastor Mike, you've laid your hands on me. Yeah, but every week the anointing is growing stronger. The virtue is flowing stronger. See, it's like out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. When you first begin to get right with God, there's just a little trickle of life coming out of your belly. But before you know it, where are you headed, Pastor Mike? I'm headed to where rivers are flowing out of my belly that everybody I pray for is healed. Everybody is healed. I've seen the crippled walk. I've seen the blind see. I've seen the death here, but not every one of them. I want to believe that everybody I prayed for, Jesus, everybody he prayed for was healed. You know what? Peter got to the place to where the very shadow of his body healed the sick. Now listen, you know what they said? You know what the apostles said? We said we will give ourselves to what? Nothing but the word and prayer. Whew. That's when God began to show up. So there's a little bit of life flowing out of you if you're born again. But we want rivers! <laughs> rivers of living water flowing out of you. Not sewage. Not negative. Not fear. Not worry. Not anxiety. Not the natural problems. We want life. Jesus said, I'm come. If, I'm, if, if, if he's given me life, what's going to flow out of me? Life. Not death. Life. Life. Let me ask you something. When you open your mouth, what's coming out? Is it life? Are you bringing joy and peace? You know how many people we've lost through the years because people were puking death on them? Where did sister so-so go? Well, sister so-so talked to them. Why wasn't there life coming out of their mouth? Whatsoever things are lovely, pure, honest, a good report, if there be any praise, if there be any virtue. You don't understand how wicked my husband or my wife is. Maybe you're getting what you're saying. Maybe you are having what you're saying. Well, he just doesn't love me. He shows no romanticism. He just, uh, he's, she's just, she's just, all she ever does is nag. All she ever does. Maybe you're getting what you're saying and you got what you're saying and you're saying what you got and your tongue, the tongue is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. It's a fire from hell. But if any man if any man controls his tongue, he's a mature man. And he's able also to bridle his whole body. Your tongue, that slimy little thing, that tongue can be used to bring a mighty move of God. Or it can be used to swing the barn doors open for every devil and demon in hell to come and get you. Your tongue. But what's in your tongue is coming up out of the well of your heart. All your tongue is is a bucket that you dip in the well of your heart and you dump out on everybody else. Amen. What have you been dumping on people? Pastor Mike, I need help. Hello, don't we all? That's why Jesus came. He said, I came, I come to, say, I came to rescue. He said, those who, who are well don't need a physician. Everybody's sick. Say, everybody's sick. Say, we all need help. Amen. Well, if you want prayer this morning, jump to your feet. Come on up here and let me lay hands on you. <laughs> Just, there's a, I call it the green line of life. Just stand on the green line of life. If you need to go, that's fine. I do think we have some food back there today. I think Sister Nancy made tuna casserole, didn't you? And what else do we have? We have meatballs. We have meatballs. Y'all stand up there now and just look to the front. Look to Jesus. I'll be right there. <laughs> For I have begun a good work, and you would say, the Lord, and I'm not yet done. For I'm, gonna t I'm about to take you to new heights and new dimensions. I'm about to reveal myself to you in ways that you have never seen or known. Do not look to the left. Do not look to the right. Trust in me with all your heart. And I will open up doors and windows and opportunities. And I'll even begin to cause my wisdom to begin to come flowing out. 
and you'll begin to tell people certain things by my spirit, and you'll say, where did that come from? And you'll know it's from the Lord. Huh. 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 Do not fear, would say the Lord, my hand is upon your life. My hand is upon your lives. For you see, I brought you together. I did this work. No matter what men would say or the devil or the flesh, I did it, would say the Lord. I have a work. I knew, I knew, I knew before you were even born that you would stand side by side. I'm about to do a creative miracle. I'm about to do a healing. Yea, I'm about to transform and change. I'm about to take you to a new height. Yea, begin to let go, begin to cast down, begin to throw away all those things that are contrary to my word. And as you surrender and submit, my spirit will flow. <laughs> It'll be like you're in heaven on earth as you cry out to the Lord. Huh, 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 huh. And a quickening to your body, a quickening to this temple, healing you and making you whole. Every affliction and infirmity gone by the Spirit of the Lord, touched by the Holy Ghost, hungry for God like never before. And I'm not done with you, would say the Lord to you, Dorothy. I'm not done. I'm not done. There's much that still needs to happen. Many young women that need to be counseled and give direction. For you have said, oh, Lord, I'm here. I don't know what to do. I know there's got to be something that has to happen, and I'm about to move you into a position where, say, the Lord, where you'll begin to give even counsel and direction even to the women who have no mothers, and I will show you, and you will minister life to them. Shoo. Shoo. Now, Lord, as these precious saints stand before you this morning, they don't look to me. I'm just a man, but I thank you by your spirit. As I lay hands on you, you'll fall forward and not backwards. You'll fall forward and not backwards. Because the Lord say you're going forward, you're not going back any longer. It's by my spirit, would say the Lord. It's by my spirit that I'm setting you free. Oh, even a lot of that garbage and all of those infirmities and even a lot of the pain and the darkness that has been in your mind is even gone. I break the power of the devil. Loose her and let her go. She's a child of the king. She's washed in the blood of Jesus and she's going forward in the things of the spirit. Mm. Mm, mm. For I'm not done with, say the Lord. I'm doing a mighty work within your heart, within your mind. You're here by my spirit. You're not here by accident. My hand is upon you. There's a job that must be done. You may be short in statue, but you're tall in the things of God. I have deposited within you truth and revelation. I have put it within you. The time has not yet been for you to speak it forth, and you have tried, but many have rejected it, but I'm about to bring it forth, for you'll discover that there will be many willing to hear in the day of visitation. <laughs> for a day of visitation has come upon you. So do not despair any longer. And do not even say, oh, Lord, I've been such a failure. It is a lie from the pit of hell. For you see, you were never the answer. You tried to do that, which you could, but it was not up to you. It was my hand that stays the devil. So look to me now. I'm about to open you up, and I'm about to release the aroma of heaven. I'm about to send forth my fragrance. In the day of visitation, many will come, and they will be willing to even sit and listen. <laughs> and you'll give to them the words of life, and it will set them free. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. For such a time would say the Lord to you, Adam, for there's been a cry in your heart, you know there's so much more. And you've struggled and you've wrestled within your mind and you said, oh Lord, I don't know which way to go. But it's time to come to me for you'll be like a gentle giant. It's time to come to me. It's time to cry out. It's time to set aside the things which so easily beset you. It's time to rise up in the spirit. It's time to stand up and begin to hide the word in your heart. And as you do these things, the enemy will flee seven different directions. 
Now I speak healing even to his infirmities. I command the spirit of infirmity to go from his body and to depart even now. In his back, in his legs, in his hip, in the disc, in the name of Jesus, made whole by the power of the spirit. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, even by the Holy Ghost, Father, come upon my sister now, begin to mold and shape her, begin to do that which needs to be done, that which natural man was unable, that which the medical world has messed up, goofed up and interfered with. Lord, even now, I pray that you would do a miracle in her synopsis, in the brain. Lord, even in her nervous system. Lord, healing her and making her whole, so solid, so stable, so dependable, and a worker in the kingdom. Lord, I see her by the Spirit rolling up her sleeves. I see her becoming like a whirlwind. I see her going forth and setting the people free by the Spirit of the Lord. <laughs> Woo! By the Spirit of the Lord. Mm. 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 Prophetic, prophetic, prophetic utterances. Oh, I hear it, I see it by the Spirit in a vision form. I see you opening your mouth. I see you whispering. I see the words coming out. I see words of life. I see words of healing. I see words of deliverance. For even as you speak it, you'll see it come to be. For even as you begin to prophesy and you begin to speak over those my people, you'll begin to see it manifest before your eyes. You'll see them transformed and changed by my spirit and even many things yea I see darkness I see evil spirits I see chains being driven out and they're disappearing as the word of the Lord is coming forth from your lips like a two-edged sword by the power of the spirit I release the prophetic gifts that are locked up inside of my sister's heart let them come forth come forth in the name of Jesus, for now is the time to begin to go forth in my spirit. Oh, I'm not even talking about going to the north, the south, the east, and the west, the long distance. I'm talking about even around this locality. The word of the Lord will begin to become so strong and so real. The visions and the dreams will become almost physical, and you'll just simply do that which you see yourself doing. <laughs> Let there be a release there, even now. There, 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 by the fire, fire of the Spirit, fire of the Holy Ghost, fire of God burning, fire, 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 and even hidden pains, hidden secrets, hidden sorrows, wounds and scars healed by the balm of Gilead. The virtue of heaven reaching down. I see the hand of Jesus, Sister Tracy. I see the hand of Jesus, this nail scarred hand, reaching into your heart right now, and he's pulling out, pulling out. He's pulling out a sliver. He's pulling out another one. He's pulling out pain. He's pulling out hurt. He's pulling things of the past, for now is the time. Not only will you forget the past, but it will be as if it never happened. <laughs> as if it never happened. As if it never happened. Mm, mm, mm. You may not know it, but these feet are anointed. They're blessed. They're touched of the Lord. There's fire burning in the bottom of your souls. It'll rise up to your soul, would say the Lord, and it will flow back down again. Fire, for there's more. There's so much more that God has called you to do than that which you have yet comprehended. I have but begun to do a good work inside of you. And you've even said it, Lord, God, you've got me in a crazy position. Sometimes I don't know what's forward and what's backwards, but it's all right because, see, you're on a potter's wheel, and he's molding and shaping, and he's making you whole, and he's taking you into a new place of freedom of the things of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, my son, you're born again. You have a Jesus in your heart. 
Are you born again? Have you ever asked Jesus into your heart? Okay. Now, Father, just pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, pray this out loud. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, come to you now I come to you now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I, surrender I surrender my heart, my mind, my mind, my mind, my mind, say my mind, my emotions, and my life to you. Even as you have touched Pastor Mike, and you've used him for your glory. Touch me now. Change me. Transform me. Make me different. Give me a hunger for the word of God like I've never had before. Let the word become real to me. Sanctify me. Separate me. For the work of the kingdom, even now. I'm going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. I come against every work of the devil. I bind it. I break it. You have no stronghold over my brother any longer, mentally, emotionally, or physically. I command you, loose him now. Come out and let him go. In the name of Jesus. Huh. In the name of Jesus. Whew. Saints be praying in tongues. Church be praying in tongues. Don't be spectators. Be a participator. Whew. Father. Woo. Huh. I know it was your spirit that moved upon my young brother. Lord, to come forward this morning. He doesn't understand it, but your spirit is taking a hold of his heart, even his physical heart, Lord, and healing even his body and making him whole. Holy Ghost, come upon him now. Wind of the spirit, blow upon him. Woo, quicken his mortal flesh, visions and dreams and revelations of the Holy Spirit. Come upon him, Lord. Use him for your glory and for your honor. Make yourself so real to him to where the things of this world are as not. Holy Ghost, do a mighty work inside of my young brother now. Now, in the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, take him. He's a vessel unto you, O oh God. They are not here by mistake. But divine destiny has come upon them. Woo, Lord, even these feet, let them be filled with the fire of heaven. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Tormenting spirit. Lying devil. She's a child of the king. She's washed in the blood. The Lord's hand is upon her life. So many times the devil's tried to kill her. And Lord, even that time she cooperated. But Lord, I break those strongholds. Even now, by the authority of the blood and the spirit of Jesus, I command my sister to be free. Free in the name of Jesus. Even now. Woo! By the Holy Ghost. Free. Free. No longer tormented. No more longer tormented where she can't even sleep. She doesn't know what's up and what's down. She doesn't know what's right and she doesn't know what's wrong. And so many times she feels like she's been forsaken. And Lord, like she's been forgotten. She's not important to you. But Lord, she's precious and she's valuable. She's the apple of your eye. And your hand is upon her. And she'll be used. She'll be used as a tool against the devil. Come here, Tracy. Put your hands upon her in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, oh, Betty. Whoa, if you only knew what I see in the spirit, what the Lord has planned for you, Betty. Oh, it's a glorious role. It's a glorious harvest. Oh, 
I see you not only ministering to children, but I even see you going out and holding children's crusades. I know that sounds like as far-fetched that how can this be, but it's going to be by the Holy Spirit, for he's going to set you aflame like a candle, a little wick of a candle, the flames. I see the flames rising from your feet, flowing over your midsection, even up through your hands and your hair. I see you on fire like a flame of joy and peace and love, and your heart will be moved with compassion for you'll look upon the little children and you'll say suffer the little ones to come unto me for such is the kingdom for you see them as little sheep with no shepherd and my love will begin to be tangible it'll flow out of you like rivers of living water so now Lord even as Paul laid his hands on Timothy and the elders laid their hands upon Timothy and released the gifts and the callings and the anointings that were within him, I lay my hands upon my sister Vetti and I release the anointings, the gifts, the callings, even from this moment forward when she goes to minister to children, it will be a supernatural, whoo, there it is, it'll be a divine impartation and it will be not her ministering out of her natural thought or emotions Ooh. Ooh. in the Holy Ghost in the Holy Ghost in the Holy Ghost in the Holy Ghost for you have wondered would say the Lord what is happening God what is happening to me how how come all these trials? How come all these tests? How come all these problems? That, Lord, even since I was a little girl, the devil's been trying to kill me. But that's because he knows. He knows. He knows that I have my hand upon you. He knows I am about to use you. He knows that you are a threat to him. He knows that I'm going to begin to flow for he has seen the glimpses and the glimmers. He's heard your voice when you began to preach me to others. He knows. So he's come against you to try to destroy, but he will not be able to. For my fire is burning on the inside. I am cleansing, I am purging, I am purifying. <laughs> By my spirit would say the Lord, I'm quickening your mortal flesh and things are going to be all right. And the Lord would say, you're just simply going to begin to laugh at the devil. You're going to begin to laugh because you know he's under your feet. Eat, for you have within you a divine violence to destroy the works of darkness. You want to see people set free. Specifically, would say the Lord, because you've come out of the darkness of the drugs of this world. Specifically, would say the Lord, those who have been addicted to the things that are destructive, I will use you to break the chains of darkness. I will use you to set the captives free. For even even as you speak to them, my Holy Ghost will arrest and I will destroy the strongholds. These demonic spirits of addiction will be broken over them, <laughs> even now. Now, 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 there, 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 fire, 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 fire. It is going to happen even sooner than you think. For you've said in your heart, your mind, your soul, your emotions, Lord, I know you want to do such great things, but when is it going to happen? Lord, I get so weary and I'm so tired from struggling. I don't know what to do. Hang on a little while longer and it will be like the day star <laughs> has arisen in your heart for the sun. <laughs> The sun is coming up over the horizon even now, even now, even now. The sun is rising even now, tiny upon you. The light of heaven has overtaken you. Mmm, <laughs> mmm, my spirit, my spirit, my spirit is within you. My spirit is upon you. I'm calling you. You hear my voice and you hear it very clearly. <laughs> now is the time to take the sword of my word and cut off every hindrance, every rope, 
every chain, every work. Cut it off, would say the Lord. Cut it off by my spirit, my word, and you will enter into another dimension. And you will have such freedom that you've never known. And you won't stand and say, I, I wonder if this is really the Lord. You'll know, you'll know, you'll know, you'll know this deep in your soul. And the Lord will set you free to serve him. To serve him. Ooh, mama. Whoo. <laughs> Sister Mary, quite contrary, is filled with the light of heaven where the joy of the Lord takes a hold of her and rivers of living water come flooding forth. For even that which you have spoken from your mouth, even now by my spirit, would declare to you that I am about to move in a supernatural way. I'm about to touch your children, your family. I'm about to fulfill the prophetic word that you have even held on to. I'm about to bring it to pass because your heart has cried out to me. And even now will you just be used to see others come to me in your immediate family. But even I will cause my light to shine like a bright torch even in the midst of your neighbors and your community and the light will shine forth and you'll find yourself walking down the hallways and the aisles of even the stores and my spirit will come upon you and you'll begin to prophesy and you'll begin to declare my will and my word and people will be set free for the Lord would say the great awakening has already started Beverly, help some as you go. Beverly, be blessed in the name of Jesus. Get ready to run, Beverly, with the good news. Get ready. The Holy Ghost is going to take a hold of you. She's happy, but it's going to get greater. I know. It's like you were born again ready. <laughs> You are. You're born again ready. Ha! Let's give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Thank you, Lord. And the Lord will say, I have not forgotten you. I have not put you aside on a shelf to just gather dust. I have raised you up. My hand is upon you. There's a job that must be done. You'll be like a torch. I see this, brother. I speak this prophetically. You'll be like a torch. I will send you here and there and over here and over there. I will send you to this place and that. My spirit will be upon you, and it will even, even spread to others. And I will burn in you, and my glory will be seen upon your face, even in your smile, even in your tender kindness and compassion for it's me on the inside working in you through you to you for you by you and through you <laughs> who for your heart has cried and wept and said lord lord all i want is you i don't want religion i don't want church i don't want legalism all i want is you you're everything to me and I've heard the cry of your heart like a little boy for his father but your father has got you by the hand and he's going to lead and guide <laughs> thank you Lord mm. don't forget tonight Lord willing 630 